Hi, it's Frank Hoos from Minilathe.com. Recently I've been working on a review of this uh, 7x16 mini lathe from LittleMachineShop.com and while I was uh, working on the review I noticed that the carriage is a little bit st sticky, that is it uh, has uh, points along the ways where it doesn't move smoothly. Now normally when the lathes come from the factory they're usually pretty well adjusted but every once in a while you'll find uh, some component or maybe multiple components that aren't adjusted optimally and so if you know how to uh, correct those adjustments you can greatly improve the feel and overall workability of the lathe so we're going to look at how to make that adjustment and recently I did uh, a video on how to adjust the cross slide and the compound and those are pretty easy to do because you can get access to the screws right on the sides of those parts but uh, to adjust the carriage you actually have to get to some screws that are up underneath and they're somewhat difficult to get to and so you have to uh, do some disassembly of the lathe to be able to properly adjust the carriage so it can be a little bit intimidating if you're brand new you just got your lathe and uh, you don't have the experience of having worked on it and I got my first mini lathe back in 1999 and uh, back in those days they often had uh, adjustment issues out of the box and uh, I remember going through this experience back then and I was very worried about not being able to get everything back together properly and of course back then the user manuals were pretty sparse and uh, there was very little if any information on the internet about the mini lathe so I was pretty much on my own but now there's a lot of good resources out there the user manuals are much better and hopefully this video will uh, help you if you need to make this particular adjustment well before we get started there's a few tools and accessories you should have on hand to make this job easier and uh, one of these is uh, some nitro gloves like these from Harbor Freight. There is a fair amount of oil and grease involved uh, and it'll get all over your hands if you're working on this procedure. You'll need a shop rag of some sort to wipe up oil and grease uh, where appropriate. And I highly recommend that you get yourself a set of these uh, T-handle metric wrenches. You can buy these in sets of 10 from Harbor Freight for uh, about 10 bucks I think, maybe a little bit more than that now, but uh, I got these back in 1999 and they're still going strong. Great tools to have on hand if you have a mini lathe. A power screwdriver, if you have one, is, is a good thing to have. Uh, we're going to remove a bunch of screws from the back of this uh, chip guard here and it makes that job a little quicker and easier. But you don't have to have that. One thing you do have to have though is a two and a half millimeter hex wrench. And this is not included uh, with the wrenches that come with the mini lathe. So uh, you'll need to get a set that includes one of these or maybe you can buy it individually. But be sure you have this on hand before you begin this procedure because you will need it. And you'll need your little uh, uh, 8, 10, 8 and 10 millimeter open end wrench that comes with the lathe. And also it's a good idea to have a, some sort of plastic baggies, Ziploc plastic bags. I get these on the internet uh, very inexpensively. This is a 3x4 size and I find them very handy when I'm uh, doing maintenance on the lathe to uh, temporarily put aside uh, screws, nuts and bolts and other parts so I can keep them together and uh, figure out where they go when I need to put them back. It also keeps them from rolling off underneath the lathe or onto the floor or wherever they want to go. So those, uh, those accessories will help you out and let's go ahead now and dig in uh, with the procedure. We're going to need to remove uh, various components to be able to get access to these and also just to provide some clearance to be able to work and so first of all I want to remove the uh, tool holder and I have a uh, an adjustable tool holder on here Let's set that aside next I want to remove the compound and I've uh, explained before and you probably are well aware of this that you have to crank the compound all the way back in order to gain access to these socket head cap screws that are hidden underneath here and you'll need a five millimeter hex wrench to loosen those up and keep your hand under here because it has a tendency to tilt and drop off when you least expect it and you want to set this somewhere aside I'm going to put it over on the other side of the shop so it's not in the way okay uh, I also want to remove the chuck and uh, let me see if I have the wrench for that handy I got to get that wrench okay this uh, this particular lathe uses a little bit larger wrench and I forgot about that. I had the uh, 
This 10 millimeter is what's normally used, which I had here, but I forgot this particular lathe has a larger 4 inch chuck and also uses a larger wrench uh, for the nuts to hold the chuck in place. So I got that, I'll just spin those off. Uh, I've done this enough times that I'm pretty confident I'm not going to drop it, but if you're new to this, good idea to put a protective board or something underneath there. And I should have taken this out of the chuck before I took the chuck off. But put a protective board under here before you remove the chuck, just in case you lose your grip on it. You don't want to bang up the uh, ways. Okay. Next, I want to remove the tailstock. And on this lathe, that's a 7x16, so there's enough room. I could probably just slide it uh, off to the end here and park it. But I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Now on most mini lathes you can just slide it right off the end, just get a good grip on it. But on some lathes, including this one, there's a stop screw on the end to uh, prevent you from inadvertently sliding it off the end when you didn't intend to. So you'll need to remove that screw if you have one. And this one is uh, pretty loose, so I can just remove it by hand. And now I can slide the, uh, have to unlock the uh, tailstock, of course, and then I can slide that right off the end, and I'll set that aside. Next, we're going to remove the lead screw, and in order to do that, we have to remove this uh, pillow block or bushing here so that uh, the lead screw can be moved out of position, and that uh, has two 5mm socket head cap screws, or the caps are 5mm, I should say. I guess the screws are 6mm. But they can uh, just be un unscrewed using a T-handle wrench, and you can see that rotational action of the wrench is uh, pretty convenient when you're doing a job like this. Now, the other end of the lead screw extends all the way through the uh, power board there, or the power box. Let me uh, move the camera over so you can see. But the lead screw goes all the way through the electronic control box and comes out here on the other side where the uh, gears are, so we'll need to remove the gear cover and uh, access that area. There are two long bolts that hold the gear cover in place, and you'll need a 4 millimeter wrench uh, to loosen those up. And just take them out and lift off the uh, gear cover, and we'll set that aside. Next we're going to remove this gear so we can gain access to the lead screw. So we'll need a 5mm uh, five millimeter, five millimeter wrench again here. And uh, you have to probably hold at the outer uh, edge of the gear to keep it from turning while you loosen that up. And be careful when you remove it, there's a washer underneath here that you don't want to lose. So set that aside. Let's get a plastic baggie over here and uh, put that in there along with those two long screws from the uh, gearbox cover. If I can get the bag open. Alright, got those in there. Okay, now we're going to pop this gear off. And you may have to prise that off with a pair of flat bladed screwdrivers. When the lathes are new, before these have been moved in and out a couple of times, they're usually pretty tight on the shaft and uh, may take a little effort to get them off. Just be sure you don't put so much pressure on that you crack it. Then there's this uh, little spacer, and that needs to come off and go in the bag. And uh, then you have to be careful not to lose this little key here that goes in the key slot. And they're sometimes tricky to get out. They get kind of wedged in there. And let me get a pair of needle nose or a pair of small vice grips, and I can pop that out. Usually you can grip these uh, with a pair of needle nose pliers, just wiggle it out a little bit like that. Or if you happen to have a small pair of vice grips, uh, they usually work too. And there again, let's uh, put this in our bag so it doesn't get lost. Alright, now with those components removed, we can now slide the lead screw out. And there is a bushing here just like the one on the other end. Let me move the camera around so you can see that better. So you can see the end of the lead screw. Uh, comes out, and here's the bushing that holds it in place, or pillow block sometimes it's called. And I'm just going to grasp the right end, and you can see I'm turning that. I'm going to wiggle it back and forth, slide it out to the right. Now as I do that, I want to be careful. Let me move the camera again, and I'll explain why. 
Now this part of the lathe right here is called the apron and back behind the apron is a device called the half nut and it clamps onto the lead screw when this lever is in the down position. So in order to remove the lead screw you have to, I should have said this first, but you have to make sure the half nut lever is in the up position so it doesn't grip onto the lead screw. But now I want to carefully slide this out to the right and I'm actually sliding it out uh, between the two halves of the half nut and once we get the apron off I'll show you what the half nut looks like and you'll understand what's going on. So carefully slide that out. It's pretty tough but you don't want to bend it obviously. You want to be careful not to uh, bang up these threads any more than necessary or as little as possible we'll say. Now I want to set this aside somewhere safe. You want to make sure the uh, lead screw is somewhere where it's not going to roll off and fall on the floor because you definitely don't want to damage the threads on that or it'll cause problems for you when you're cutting threads or possibly doing power feed. Well, after removing the oily lead screw, I remembered that I didn't yet put my gloves on, so I went ahead and did that. And I also want to take these screws that we've removed and uh, put them in a baggie so we don't lose track of them. Okay, now we're ready to uh, remove the apron, which is this front part here on the carriage. And that uh, takes, I think it's a five and a half, yeah, no, maybe a six millimeter, looks like a six millimeter wrench. Uh, there's a socket head cap screw here on either side of the saddle and you just need to uh, loosen those up and remove them. Now once I remove the second one the saddle is going to, or the, cap, the apron I should say, is going to drop down so I want to get my hand underneath that so it doesn't drop. And uh, there we go. So I've got those two out. I can just lower the apron and uh, while we've got it out here, I just wanted to show you a few things. Let's uh, zoom in on that. Okay, now there, uh, I spoke earlier of the, the half nuts and the half nut lever. And these are the half nuts and they form a nut. You can see this lever opens and closes it. And when they're in the closed position, they grip onto the thread of the lead screw. And uh, when they're in the open position, the lead screw can turn without moving the carriage. So that, those are the half nuts. And this uh, lathe also has an interesting feature. It has a very thin uh, transparent plastic sheet here protecting these gears and the purpose of that is to keep uh, swarf or chips from getting in there. Um, that was first implemented I think as an option by uh, Varman Al who has a website. He was a very early user of the uh, mini lathe and came up with that idea and I've done it on a few of my lathes over the years. So this is the first time I've seen it as a standard factory uh, feature but it's easy to add to your lathe if you don't have that and will help keep uh, chips and other stuff from getting in these gears. Okay now we're getting down kind of to the bare bones and we can uh, slide the uh, saddle really is, is what's left here of the whole carriage assembly back and forth a lot more easily now. But in order to adjust the screws on the back here we also need to remove this rear chip guard. So I'm going to swing the lathe around and do that. And of course this is the heavy end so I want to keep that back on the bench and I can take the light in and uh, usually you can just swing it around like that. There's actually four screws along the bottom here and then there's a fifth screw that's uh, on this bend here right up next to the spindle. So I'm going to take that one out first. This is where the uh, power screwdriver is helpful. If you have one, just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, there's one. Now I'm going to start down at this end. There's number two. And number three. Whoop, missed that one. Then I'm going to come over to this end, get number four, and I save this one for last so it'll keep the uh, panel in more or less a balanced position. This makes it a little bit easier to handle when it comes loose. All right, now we can just lift it off and we'll set that aside. Now the reason we needed to remove that back panel is as you may be able to see here, there are some adjusting screws. There are 
three, well actually five adjusting screws and I'll take the whole saddle off and explain how that uh, works.